So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and one of the comments that I've been getting lately, especially over the last month or so since I added these widgets onto my iPadOS home screen is which stock widget and which crypto widget are you using? Right? So I thought I'd take this opportunity to not only answer those questions, but also talk about my top five finance iPadOS apps that I use to not only run my personal life, but also my YouTube income and all that comes with that as well. So today we're gonna to talk about the bank of choice that I use right now, my investments, so my stocks and crypto applications that I use that will also come with the widgets. We're gonna talk about which finance app I use overall to track everything and then what I use to actually track uh, the actual YouTube finances as well. So without further ado, if you guys are in for the ride, let's get it going. So without wasting any more time, we're gonna hop right into the applications that I use. So the first one is gonna be my bank of choice. And I've made actually a couple videos on this bank before, and some of you guys have actually signed up for before, so kudos to you guys. But this bank is called Chime Bank, and they've been around, I wanna say five, six, seven years now, and I've been using them since 2016. And one of the main reasons I kind of gravitated towards them, because even back in 2016, I would say that I was one of the early adopters to these types of banks, because everybody was used to the Wells Fargo's, the Banks of America, all those brick and mortar shops, and, and banks that we were so used to. So Chime came around and they were like, hey, we're not gonna have any physical locations, but without those physical locations means we have a lot less marketing and operational spend, so we can give you zero fees across the board, right? So there's like zero overdraft fees, zero late fees, like there's literally no fees for anything. Whatever you can think of, there's no fees for that. So I love that because I remember back in the day when I was like in high school, maybe early college, you know, I would like overdraft my debit card or something like that, and then all of a sudden I owed the bank 35 bucks, right, for me spending maybe like $3 on like a sandwich or a snack or something. And all of a sudden that little donut turned into a $38 donut. So that's something that you don't need to worry about when it comes to Chime. So just to run down some of the features that they have and some of the reasons why I actually went with Chime Bank. So like I said, no fees whatsoever. You get payday up to two days early, which it works, and it even works with the YouTube channel. So AdSense does come in usually around 36 to 48 hours earlier than normal. They have a checking and a savings account. That savings account does give you, I think, 0.5% APY, which is, for the most part, I recommend people not to have money in their savings and kind of put it elsewhere where you're gonna earn a little bit more on that money. But hey, if you are happy keeping it in your savings, then you do get 0.5% APY, which is, I think way more than what the national average is. And then also talking about the savings account, they have a feature called auto save. So 10% of any amount, I think over $200. So if you get an income of over $200, 10% of that will go automatically into your savings account. Now you can toggle this on and off. So if you don't want it, you can turn it off, but I like to keep it on. So I know that every single time, 10% of whatever money I make, goes into my savings for like a rainy day fund or something like that. So overall, Chime is awesome. They have a great user experience. I love the application. I love the web portal. On the iPad Pro, I usually use the web portal. And then obviously on my phone, I use the application itself because it's just awesome. I mean, it's very, very easy to use. If you need to get something done, you do it quickly and then you get out of there. Customer service is actually awesome. Now they just added another 30,000 ATMs. So you have zero fees ATMs, I think over 70,000 locations. So overall, Chime Bank gets my stamp of approval if you guys need a, a cool bank. And one thing that they did just recently add is their credit builder card. So if you're new into the banking world, new into the finance world, and you don't have a credit card yet, or you need maybe a smaller credit card to help build that credit, what they did is they added a credit builder card. So it's basically almost like a prepaid card. So you fill it up with your money from your checking account. But then at the end of the month, when it comes time to report to the credit bureaus and stuff like that, it acts as a credit card that you're paying off in full every single time. So it does help your credit out a little bit, which is awesome to have. And then there is one thing that I do wish they have, and hopefully they add it at least at some point soon, is a joint checking account. So right now you can only ride solo dolo, which for the most part isn't a big deterrent, but for people that wanna have a joint checking account and things like that, they don't have that feature, unfortunately, but that's to each their own. That is one thing that I do wish they added. But overall, like I said, Chime Bank is awesome. Highly recommend it. We're gonna link everything down below, and they've never paid me to say anything. Nobody, I've never spoken to anybody outside of customer support with Chime. So this is me just kind of giving my endorsement with Chime Bank. Absolutely love it. So now let's get into my stock investment app slash widget, right? So this one is actually called Public. I heard about Public, I wanna say two, three months ago from Colin and Samir. I don't know if you guys follow them. They have an awesome channel about the creator economy and things like that. So Public sponsored one of their videos and I decided to sign up, try it out because Previous to that, I never used Robinhood. I never used any application aside from Cash App, honestly. So I would throw my small investments through the Cash App, you know, investing part of the Cash App, and it works fine. It's totally cool, like very, very easy to use, zero fees, nothing like that. But then I wanted to try something that's a little bit more substantial, more investment focused. So I decided to go over to Public. And one of the main reasons I avoid Robinhood is because of all the bad press it gets. And I don't know, I just never felt 100% comfortable with Robinhood. So Public is awesome. And the reason why I like Public is because it's like a social investment app, right? So I follow a lot of investment people, a lot of finance people, and they invest on there, talk about their investments, 
almost like a Twitter for your investment. So every time you do make an investment, it doesn't say how much you invested, but you have the, the opportunity to share what you invested and why you invested in there and kind of get a conversation going about that. So Public is a strictly stock investment app. There is no crypto side to it at all. So if you just want to get into stock investment application, Public is the way to go. The user interface is beautiful. Basically, I just dollar cost average every single day into some of my main companies that I really like. And overall, it works really, really well. And what they also have in there is if you hold on to your cash on there and treat it as a savings account without investing into stocks, you do get 2% APY. So I remember I told you about Chime doing half a percent. If you keep your money in public, as long as it's not inside of a stock and you just have it in like the cash funds inside of public, you get 2% APY in that money. There is zero transaction fees. Now there is an ability to tip. So if you are feeling nice, you made a big gain or something, you make a trade, you can then tip public, but that is not necessary. It's not mandatory. There's zero, zero, zero transaction fees for stock trading, which is awesome to have. And you can buy as little as a dollar. So again, I'm going to link public down below if you guys want to try it out. And then again, the widgets are absolutely amazing. I love the widgets. They're very clean, the small, medium, large ones. I like to keep the medium one on there just because it gives me my top three widgets for that day. And then also it tells you how you're doing on a daily basis. So the stock widget app will tell you or the public widget app will tell you, hey, you're down X amount of percent today or you're down or you're up X amount of percent uh, for these last 24 hours or for this day of trading. So I actually like that just to give it a quick glance so I don't have to go into the application to test it out. So overall public is awesome. And they even have a way to transfer your stocks from any other brokerage for free into public. I decided not to do that. I kept my Cash App money in Cash App as another rainy day fund, I guess. And then kind of just started over with Public. So overall, absolutely love Public. Gets my high recommendation. Shout out to Colin and Samir for recommending it because it's an awesome app. And I love kind of interacting with people on there, kind of figuring out why they invested in what they invested in and pretty much try to grow the portfolio as quickly and as nicely as possible. And again, mostly long-term gains. We're not doing day trading on here. You can do some day trading on there, but I like to focus on the long-term. This next one is gonna be a quick one. So for a crypto investing app, the one that I use is Coinbase, Woo, right? <laughs> kind of crazy, everybody uses Coinbase. Uh, and the main reason I use Coinbase is just because peace of mind. Yes, they pretty much take anywhere from a dollar to $5 per transaction, depending on how much you're investing, which can be kind of annoying, especially if you're trying to invest in small increments, like if you're investing five, $10 increments, then yeah, they're gonna take like 10% of that money because you are, it does cost a dollar to invest at least into whatever stock or crypto, I mean, on Coinbase. But I'm willing to give that up for peace of mind. You know, Coinbase is very secure. They have staking options. So I like to stake a lot of algo on there because that gives you like 5% or 4% APY on your algo. Even though crypto overall has been hitting that downtrend, it's all about the long game, guys. Only invest in money that you're willing to lose. And I know everybody says that. And for the most part, people don't have that money that they're willing to lose but don't do it in big increments. That was the whole thing. Just be a little bit disciplined. If the market just continues to crash and crash and crash, maybe invest a little bit. When it goes a little bit higher, don't invest that much. Basically dollar cost average on the way down. And then eventually it's gonna take six months before everything starts to kind of climb back up. So just let it settle and eventually do your thing. But I just like Coinbase because I said, it's a peace of mind thing. I know that my money's secure on there and that I own the crypto that I'm purchasing as well. So that's a big thing. So that is the my crypto investing app. But I do use an app to actually track all those investments because Coinbase from a tracking standpoint is terrible. Because with Coinbase, it doesn't let you see, you know, what your average cost on that asset is or, you know, how much you've lost overall or how much you've gained overall on that asset. So what I do with that is I actually connect it to a application called FTX Blockfolio, another free application, free to use. You can actually use it to invest. I decided not to just because, you know, I like to keep my, my things in Coinbase because I said it's a little bit more secure, at least for me personally. And basically what FTX Blockfolio does is you sync it with your APIs to Coinbase and every transaction that you do on Coinbase, it'll track it. And then it'll tell you like, hey, you know, you spent $200 in the last six months on this crypto. This has been your average cost to get into this crypto. This is how much you've lost over that amount of time. And it also includes those fees. So it includes the fees as a loss, as a percent loss. So it only shows that you've hit a positive gain after you've recouped even that fee, which I actually like because it takes into account the fact that yes, I spent $10 on a certain crypto, but I only really got like $9 and one cent of assets from that crypto, right? But then it'll tell me the moment I get above that $10 mark. So again, I love Blockfolio. I use it mostly on the iPhone because it does only have the iPhone version of the application, same with Coinbase, but I do like to have the, the widgets for both Coinbase and Blockfolio on the iPad and the iPhone. And now let's talk about my last two applications. So. The second to last application we're gonna talk about is an app called Mint. So Mint has been around for ages, for such a long time. I remember three, four years ago using it to keep track of all my transactions and stuff like that. But basically what Mint is, is you sign into all of your finance accounts, right? Whether it's your, your basic checking account, any credit cards that you have, any mortgages or loans, investments, you know, 
car leases, car ownership, anything that involves money, income, and debt, you can kind of sink into your Mint account and then it automatically over time kind of tracks your overall net worth, which is very cool to see. So you can kind of see if it's going up, if it's going down, you know, what you can do to improve it. It also gives you your credit score if you want it. So overall, Mint is just a way to track all of your transactions from a personal and a business standpoint if you want to. So basically anything that involves you know, me and my finances, I've logged into Mint so I can keep track of everything moving forward. So it'll tell you when bills are coming up, it'll tell you, like I said, your net worth, it'll tell you how much you have in your checking and your savings and your investing, how much you owe on your car, on your house, on pretty much anything. It'll even take on student loans and personal loans, whatever you want, you can just, as long as you can tie it in there, which 99.9% .9 of the time you can, Mint is awesome. The one thing that for some reason I'm incapable of syncing is my Apple card. I've seen online that there's a way to do it, but I haven't personally been able to find out how to sync my Apple card. So I haven't been able to track it. So I just got to keep that in mind in the back of my head to, to pay that off whenever I use it. But I do wish that they were able to sync it because I, as of right now, me personally, I've not been able to sync my Apple card into my Mint. So I just got to keep track of that. But aside from that, everything else is trackable through Mint. And then lastly, the app that I use to actually track my finances for the YouTube channel is actually just a Google Sheets drive, right? So. I use just one of their regular, I believe it's like an income or profit and loss templates that they have. And I've been using that same template for almost two years now. So I can see exactly how much I've made per transaction, per day, per month, what my profit and losses are, how much my overhead is, what my operational costs, kind of see what my revenue is, overall revenue, and then finally my overall profits for the month. So that's what I use. And again, it takes me about one minute every single day. I go in, I see how much I made on Amazon that day, how much I made on Google AdSense that day and just kind of keep track of all the sponsors that are coming in. And then at the end of it, it just spits out the overall net profit that we've made for that month. And ideally, I'm just trying to grow the channel as much as possible, right? So it's a very simple kind of Excel sheets, you know, sheet for lack of a better term. And that's what I use right now just to track the YouTube finance side of things. Maybe I'll upgrade it at some point, but for now, it works pretty well, especially as a solo person kind of running everything right now, right? But that's pretty much it. So those are my top five applications. We have, like I said, Chime, Coinbase, Public, Mint and then Google Drive. And don't forget about Blockfolio to track all your crypto assets and you know your overall profit and loss is basically what I wanted with that one. But I'm gonna link all the apps down below. There's zero sponsors. This is me kind of giving information on what I use on a daily basis. And I do use everything on a daily basis on the iPad and on the iPhone. So if you guys enjoyed videos like this, let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to kind of share a little bit more of that. I did wanna make a video maybe kind of recapping the first half of the year from a income and money standpoint on the YouTube channel, just so you guys can get an idea of how much a, you know, a 30,000 subscriber YouTube channel can be making on YouTube in 2021, because I think you guys would be pretty surprised. I mean, I definitely was, especially the last couple months, but shout out to you guys, because without you guys watching, then I couldn't even make videos like this, but don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment below if you guys want more videos like this, like I said, or if you guys want me to go in depth into any other avenue on this side of the YouTube world, Again, all the apps are linked down below and there's usually special offers like Chime, you get like $75 each if you refer somebody. Public, you get free stocks up to $70. Mint doesn't really have a referral. Coinbase has a referral program as well. So I think it's like five or $10 for each person that signs up and we both get everything. So it's a win-win for everybody. But like I said, that's gonna be it for this video. Until next time.